Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Slasher Scotty. I am your host, Scotty McCoy, and boy, do I have a surprise for all of you. I have on Zoom with me right now Marcus Patrick, and he played Jack Carver on Days of Our Lives. He played, and if I can pronounce his name correctly, because I never could get it right, Jamal Kude, I'm guessing? Kudahi. Yes. And all my children, Father Denny on Passions, and where I was first introduced to Marcus as an actor, Dave on My Wife and Kids. Hey, Marcus, how you doing? Great, man. Great introduction. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You're, the, you're probably like the third person. And is the funny the thing is the other two were also Days of Our Lives cast members that said my introduction was amazing. So that's, that's pretty funny. We, you know, at the end of the day, we all know that the entertainment industry is some, somewhat gimmicky. But, like, let's you want to watch a heavyweight title fight. You need Michael Buffer getting ready. Let's get ready to rumble. We love that interest, you know what I mean? And you put the effort in, so kudos to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. So let's get down just to the basics first. How did you get your start as an actor? Oh, uh, interesting. I guess. Uh, when I was a little child in England, I was playing Joseph, literally when I was like four or five years old in the nativity play. <laughs> and I think I kind of took pride in that. Like, mm -hmm. oh, Joseph, there's Mary, there's baby Jesus, and everyone came to see it. <laughs> you know, I think there was some element of me at that age thinking, interesting, quite, quite you know, artistic pathway. But I think really what triggered me to be like, you know, I want to do that was like Bruce Lee. Uh, I was beat up as a kid and uh, I had definitely gone through some bullying. And then I was like, I'm determined never to be bullied again because I'm, I'm a real like a loving person. I'm a loving sweetheart type of a person. Like I just like happy and play. And we do know there are people who are not like that in the world. So beat up. And I started getting that realization as to how some humans are not too friendly and are bullying. I went full on into martial arts and I was just obsessed with Bruce Lee. Like literally, you can see me, I'm sitting here in the splits. That's what I did as a kid. I would be like watching, mm -hmm. just watching Bruce Lee and trying to channel everything about him. And uh, that's probably why I was like, I'm going to be an actor and do action movies, you know, because after that it was like Van Damme and and all the other action movies that kind of followed suit. Um, and that was my original goal, actually, was to go to L.A. and, um, you know, find a movie director for action martial arts movies. Because I was actually a British Taekwondo champion by that right. stage. So I had legit fighting credentials, championship cred credentials. And now I wanted to get the acting and get it going. But my agent kept saying, oh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll do that for you later. Just just do this off project. Just just do this one. Just do this one. And so, you know, I never managed to get to my ultimate goal, which was uh, a martial arts actor. Mm. But here, on your show, Scotty Slasher, I'm on your show. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And I'm, I'm so glad to have you. I mean, I know uh, you're Facebook friends with a really good friend of mine, one of my best friends, uh, Marcus Magix, his name is on Facebook. Um yeah, I know he's on your Facebook, and I'm like, I thought I had it, Mark, Mark, you Marcus Patrick, but I'm like, maybe I didn't. So I sent you a friend request, and you accepted, it and I asked you, you know, hey, do you want to come on my show? And you're like, absolutely. Do you have any anything that I can see what your format's like? And I sent you a couple of episodes. You're like, you're a good host. I'll do the show. Well, I look for the type of energy that's going to keep the show focused on positivity. Um, mm -hmm. activity out there in the world and I'm like I don't want to go on a show and start jumping into politics or, um, uh, or anything that's going to bring anybody down mm -hmm. I really but when I noticed your energy was so positive I was like okay I, I, I will go on that show because of what I saw and at the end of the day uh, soap operas as trivial as they you know may seem mm -hmm. I think it, for all of us at some point in our lives um something silly and juicy to like <laughs> get addicted to you know 
during a certain hour of the day, like, oh, snap, we got to go and see that. Did you see that? Uh, mm -hmm. What happened tomorrow? And there's some hokiness to, to, the, uh, to the theme, the genre. But, I, you know, if it was too heavy or, or a little too serious, it, it probably would not be as successful as it is as a genre. Just like yes. WWE wrestling. We kind of, we all really know, like, oh, by mistake, by the way. But... <laughs> You you can't deny that they, those slams hurt, you know, yeah. and and the uh, the over the top play of the wrestling is also kind of like entertaining, it's funny, you know. Right, absolutely. So I'm guessing you're a WWE fan. Uh, I don't like tune in now, and I'm like a hardcore fan of it. But I can't deny there have been moments in my life that I have tuned in to Steve Austin or. <laughs> Johnson doing his thing and back in the day when I was young I remember it was like the ultimate warrior and Hulk Hogan and all those characters and I was like you know me and my cousins were always like oh shit I'm and we were always doing it you know I mean? <laughs> you're always practicing like thinking that right. some real fantasy you're creating so I feel like there is something to it mm -hmm. um that it brings positivity as long as it brings people to a space where they're right. happy yeah yeah and if you look at my facebook profile you'll barely see if any at all anything about politics and very little about religion because the, i i mean i'm a christian i'm not i mean i'm a christian but i don't post that because i try to keep drama free on my facebook because i don't want to log on to my facebook and see a bunch of people fighting and debating i'm like that's not what my facebook's for i want my, want my facebook to be positive i don't i don't want this negative energy in my life well i mean at the end of the day i was raised christian and um i would say that at this stage in my life i would just call myself spiritual yes but good themes of it and um at the end of the day i, I respect everybody's different faith and pattern was agnostic but he was a very positive guy you know he believes in logic and and uh he's a physics master so anytime i'm presenting a theory to him it has to come with something that's tangible um uh he's always like well is it positive is it good for you is it is it going to be you know productive so to me you know at the end of the day that's the pathway i choose and the more negative i see the world getting or people getting the more I'm like, interesting, you know, like I've learned, you know, me is a very important word because if someone directs some hatred at me, there could be some truth in it, right? First mm -hmm. of all, and if there is any truth in it, I'll analyze it. If there is any truth in it, I'll be like, oh, that's an interesting point for me to use as truth to get better. If I can get better, I will. Yeah. And on the flip side, if I cannot get any better and they're just calling me something in a hateful theme or a negative theme that like, okay, let's say it was the color of my skin. I, I obviously can't change who I am. Um, then I realize, oh, okay, it's just a hater, negative. Mm -hmm. And what can I do with that energy? I can transform it into fuel to make me work out even harder, make me even better. Mm -hmm. And better what I do in my life to earn for my family. So I'm always looking at the word alchemy and, and mm -hmm. like, I'll be it's because I just feel like, you know, that is what you have to do when you're making something, right? When you're yeah. cooking, you like, it's like, yeah. this is like, like Tai Chi, you know yeah. what I mean? Absolutely. Turn anything into positivity because I got no choice but to win. My, I have no choice but to win until I'm dead, you know? Yeah. And so <laughs> my point is, I want to win not for me, for my family. Absolutely. The desire to take care of my family, you know. Yep, I stole from Taylor Swift. Haters are my motivators. The more hate I get, the better I, I succeed. It's the only way. Absolutely. So you were obviously in three soap operas of Passions, All My Children, and Days of Our Lives, and you were also in My Wife and Kids. So this next question is going to be like a four different answer type of question. But uh, what were your auditions like for each of those shows? Oh, uh, okay. I think I remember like when I did all my children, I was tested on a green screen in Los Angeles. Um, and I remember it was just a very simple scene. I mean, we're, we're going back right now more than <laughs> it's got to imagine for me. This isn't so it's 
do recall every element of that one. Um, but I just remember it was a green screen. I was tested. And then I heard from my agent that they loved me, you know, yeah. really? And I, I, I thought I hadn't done that great. Honestly, I was just like, um, but you know, it was good enough. I think I was given the contract for six months on all my children okay. and to four years. Um, but it was me who chose to leave and we can get into that. I yeah. chose. And then um, with uh, Days of Our Lives, that one, there was more tests. And I remember having to test for the big producer at the time. Mm -hmm. And it was, we have to film an episode, you know, like you are literally, you're filming an episode, but you're testing. So you're being tested different. You're being tested with the, um, there's these, in the soap operas, they got these huge ass cameras. They're like these old school RoboCop type cameras that are massive. Oh, oh. Sit, on, sit on these uh, wheels, right? right? So they're, and you have to sort of play this do -si do It's like a theater stage mm -hmm. where, you, and in order for them to get that beauty headshot, so I'll just for a second use the phone. They, they kind of ha have you at this angle and then you have to, sh you have to do your scene this way. And then they turn it around. So it's it's kind of like you're you're learning also about the camera angles, mm -hmm. as as well as how to make sure you're acting in the way that they want you to. And like, okay, do that scene again, and change to this because they want to see are you able to listen and change? Because at the end of the day, the director's the the boss of that show that piece of work and and if you can't change according to his guidance then you're not going to probably be successful for them and uh my wife and kids was actually i remember damon Way wayans was in the room and um he was part of it like okay do it again do the scene again and there was like a bunch of wayans brothers in the, uh, in the room and sisters because it was like full of laughter and loudness and mm -hmm. i also and I'm very capable of putting on that swagger that was also, at the time, I had to have the homosexual vibe. Mm -hmm. but because of my whole life, that was so easy to do. And they were immediately bursting into laughter. So because I had the room roaring with laughter, I was like, I must have got that one. Like, if I haven't got that one, I'll be surprised, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, Dave. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Yeah, I thought that character was amazing. Um, I really did. And it, it was just so funny. Like, it, it wasn't like all stereotypical, but it was like, it it had the co comedic and it was very funny. And I really, yeah. I, I loved what my wife and kids ever since I was like, you know, a teenager. Well, the secret to playing Dave, which is what I feel, uh, uh, and is that when I watched so many people play gay characters, they overplay the gay. And mm -hmm. the thing that great people don't understand is that most gay characters, like, you know, go to the gay club, there are some flaming gay people, right? Flamers. But they're mm -hmm. most very straight, very conservative, very, uh, you know, they're very cool. And so I was yep. just like... Like me. <laughs> <laughs> most people don't realize that you actually have to play it in that mysterious tone because yeah. when it is... Is he giving me the gay vibe right now? Because if you don't have that mysterious part, then the the, the comedy is lost. You know, right. the comedy is in the part where it's like, it's the little punchline at the end and the, that little smooth, right. you know, yeah. which was an element I think sold Dave. You know, absolutely. So regarding all my children and days of our lives, why did you decide, uh, or why were you let go, or why did you decide to leave those soap operas? Well, with all my children, um, what they had promised me was like, because I didn't really even want to go down the soap opera path, quite frankly. I don't really want to do a soap opera and I don't want to live in New York. Yeah, but they really want you. They really want you. Okay. Well, maybe this is like, a, I wanted to go, like I said, I wanted to go into movies and I kind of wanted to steer my career down a pathway much the same way someone like Wesley Snipes had, which is like become a, you know, a, a, a mixed black action hero and use some vehicle from a comic book. So, and, and Stan Lee was my buddy, actually. Stan Lee really liked me. May he rest in peace. And he was trying to give me a character 
to do that with. Um, my agent was just like, look, just build your career and build your visibility. Let's just do this soap opera. I'm like, okay, well, they're going to have to build me and promise me that they're going to build my character. Because if I'm going to be flying to New York to do it, they're going to have to do it. And they didn't. I was just this guy that was, uh, I think I was a, uh, yeah, I was a bartender, well as a law school student and helping women who were um, being victimized and bullied and, and helping them take asylum. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they, which, which was kind of a nice developmental character to, to start with. It never went anywhere. And I was just like always stuck behind the bar as this cliche character. And you have to realize, especially back then, this is like 2007, the, the amount of roles there were for black actors, and I am considered a black actor. As light-skinned as I am, I'm a black actor. Right. There were fewer, much fewer roles back then not to mention what roles you got were kind of limited into this like, okay, so we're going to put you on the show for this amount of time. And the rest of the show is Caucasian. And that really irked me. And that's why I say, look, you're not going to put me in this little pigeon box. I'm not happy unless you actually develop me as a full character. I don't have this yes sir, yes sir kind of vibe where I'm going to just be at peace with being this like token black character behind the bar that you show once in a while right i got it so because they didn't give me what i put what the, i felt was promised i just said look i'm not going to keep flying to new york for this i'm not happy adios so that's that that's the reason for that and i did it as respectfully as possible but at the same time i just i'm not going to be locked up for four years doing that mm -hmm. because income that they give you isn't as great as people think it is, in, especially when you're dealing with the expenses of flights and New York, you know? This is actually at Trump's plaza, right opposite the ABC studios. So ABC was here and Trump's plaza was here. And because I was very new to New York, I, I knew it was going to be expensive, but I knew I could just jet in, go there, get my sleep, go down, go into ABC and go up. I was thinking kind of like a, a machine you know what i mean like i just want to go to abc so yeah but at the same time i'm like if i'm making the commitment to do that to fly from a city because i'm from england originally i'm living in la i'm flying from a city into your town i'm staying opposite and i'm coming here i'm showing you as you know i'm committed to this this job but if they give me you know the rewards and the the character development that was required, I was just like, I'm out. That's what, that's true. Um, but I really liked the producer. I remember having a conversation with her just saying, look, I'm just not happy. You know, let's not have a, not create any war about this. You know, I, there are plenty of actors that could do this for you. And, you know, you can write me out. I'm dead, whatever. <laughs> you know, if I'm not happy, I'm not happy. <laughs> exactly. I mean, at the end of the day, I guess from being from another country and having been through so much and seeing life as so multi-layered, I don't get drawn in quite so much to the nitty gritty of L.A., Hollywood, or my I'm not going to have a crisis attack because I'm not doing Hollywood or I'm not doing a soap opera, you know. Um, now, with uh, Days of Our Lives, that one was more juicy and interesting. Mm -hmm. My agent at the time, he told me you should do Playgirl. And I'm like, really? Like, look, man, it broke. He said it broke Burt Reynolds. He told me it's helped, I think, Tyrese career. I can't remember how many other people he had told me it had pushed into the limelight. And he says, and you're this particular type of guy that it will help. And I was like, huh, I'm not so sure about this, dude. But, you know, maybe I should. And then, we, it, it, you know, we won't have any of this full frontal nudity or whatever. So that... You don't get harmed. Well, my, I call myself a stupid ass just as a joke, right? I go to the no full frontal nudity, but I'll just, I'll just have fun because I'm a dancer and I'm free, right? I've been coming from England. We're just a little bit more liberal about our nudity. It's not a big deal, you know? In, I think England and Europe are just that way. Yeah. So 
start dancing around on the set in the silhouette. And before you know it, they've captured my images clearly of me being full frontal naked. And uh, despite the fact that there was a contract that said no full frontal, they all went ahead and published it all. And so I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> I was like, I can't believe it. But you oh, know, oh. I'm the biggest selling play girl, apparently for, um, I mean, maybe because I was right on the soap opera at the time, you know, on all these soaps and stuff as well. And there I am, butt ass naked, so they can sensationalize the whole thing, you know? <laughs> I'm pretty sure the days of our lives are just like, <sighs> You know, because they're so conservative. And this is 2008, probably by now. Okay. And, you know, I just remember getting told from the producer, um, yeah, they've written you out. And uh, I think, I, I can't remember which one. Like, today is your last day. That was the end, or something like that. And they didn't go on record and say, we're, you know, we're letting you go for the reason of um, Playgirl. But it was kind of like bubbling in the air. You know what I mean? Like, probably is. Um, which to me, at the time, I was like, that's a stupid move. Because I probably could have helped create more fun sensationalism within the show. You know what I mean? Right. But uh, I guess they just were too conservative. And yeah. actually, I was like, cool. I think because I've always been a tycoon and I've always been able to go to a gay club and dance and make my money. You see, it never. All right. You went on record and said you're a gay male, right? Yeah. So you're at peace with that. For me, straight male with friends like you. And yeah. and if I'm 2008 and I go to the studio and they're like, well, you're dancing at gay clubs. And I'm like, yeah. And like, I've always been like, and right. what's the big deal? What's, what's the big deal? But they're like, well, we don't know what to say about this at the studios. You know what I mean? So it was always like the management and the agents, they're like, I'm like, but some of you are gay yourselves. You know, like, why are you hiding? You know? Right. Um, <laughs> when I have Harry, he's like, uh, you, you, I don't know. I, I want to put you in this movie, but I'm, I'm just nervous. I'm nervous because my, my church audience won't accept me. And I'm like, you're Medea, dude. Like, what are you? I don't understand. What's your deal? Well, you're worried about me dancing in gay clubs? And, and that was actually, when, when that happened, when I finally had that meeting with Tyler, and here I am in the, he had the richest house I'd ever been in, like the whole floor glass. And here I am, I'm at the stage where I've done all this body of work, and he's told me he's watched my whole body of work. And here I am sitting opposite him. My agent was right there. And he tells me he's worried to put me in the movie, which was called I Can Do Battle by Myself. He was either going to play, put me in the guy that Brian uh, White played or Adam Rodriguez played, who I played opposite in CSI Miami with, right? Adam Rodriguez played the character, I think, the good yeah. guy. And the what that role was protect, apparently going to go to me because Tyler said he'd been studying my work. Well, he said, ah, you're stronger than me, dude. You know? I don't think I can do that. I'm like, really? I'm like, ah, man. At that point, I just felt like there wasn't any backbone in Hollywood to move me forward. Because me, as you can see, here I am, 48, taking care of my kids, still dancing at gay clubs. Yeah, I'm crazy. I'm crazy about life being truthful and free and, and full of love. And I don't care because, you know, my whole life has been supported by gay friends. Gay yeah supported me and, and still to this day i go to the club hey marcus how's your wife oh she's so beautiful oh, your children are so beautiful and then they give me a tip thank you hugs genuine and they have so much so how can i not be truthful about that mm -hmm. and you know what i mean yeah just so i can get so i've always been in this place where mm -hmm one side of my reality will not accept the other side. And that's what happened probably on Days of Our Lives. Nowadays, I don't know, maybe they have gay characters and maybe they're more... They do. <laughs> right? You know what I mean? They have women on women and they have men and men, yep. Right, and yet when I was there, probably it was like, oh, yeah. uh, I think I was on the front cover of Star Magazine and Perez Hilton. I remember going through the supermarket going, oh, shit. Yeah. 
Well, now they have Will Horton, uh, a legacy character, married to Sonny Kiriakis, Victor's grandson. And they they and Will, when he was coming out, like, you know, that he was he was uh, accepting that he was gay, but he couldn't really accept it. He slept with his ex-girlfriend, got her pregnant. And now Sonny and uh, Will are the co-parents of the of the baby. Yep. Well, as you can see, they've definitely progressed. I mean, as society is, you know, and like me, you know, what's so funny. Back then. I was considered wild, tycoon, <gasps> a, a taboo, edgy me. Now I go to the clubs and I'm like, I'm I'm the dude they're looking at as conservative because I go home to my wife, you know, right. and I don't swing about, I don't play about the field, you know. Yeah. I just go to dance, entertain, hug, massage, love people, get my tips, go home, you know. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm the conservative one, mm-hmm. and yet. You know, I mean, back in the day, I was considered, oh, he's pretty crazy, man. Like, he's edgy. He's out, you know? (laughs) So I'm going to ask you a question about your exit on days. So obviously you mentioned that you, um, that, you you know, you you just told the whole story about what happened of why you you were gone. Like, you know, just, your character didn't really have an exit arc. For all we know, your character of Jack Carver could still be, you know, a security officer at Salem University. So if you could write an exit story arc for your character, what would it be? Uh, an exit story character. I mean, I, I don't know if I have that in my mind. I mean, like my kind of, I, forgive me, I'm, I'm aware I have an ego and I'm aware my spirit tells my ego, calm down, little boy, you're getting too out of hand. Like you have to, you have to have this inner psychological conversation between your ego right. But if I were to write a role, my uh, my ego is going to speak up, <laughs> figure out a way to become a leading man, right? And you know, to put a man that I like me into a space where I'm just going to be killed off for some stupid reason uh, doesn't make sense to me. Right, right. Put me in myself a hero. I'm going to make myself a hero like a rock, a Dwayne the Rock Johnson character in right. within the. I don't know. I will probably just bring forth a different energy that is required in the soap genre that comes from the A-list uh, genre. Because if you right. if you or you know um, characteristics from the A-list genre, whether you bring in you know the characteristics from the Fast Five franchise, mm-hmm. you know, make a character similar to you know. Dominic, um, the lead of the Fast and Furious, or Hall, or and you bring that element in there. You put some fighting in it, and you put some uh, real stakes in it. That's where I would go with uh, Jet Carver because he started out this amazing FBI, I say, yep. you know, flying yeah. back and to uh, Vegas with a, you know, undercover operation, and then he ends up a. Uh, uh, a mall cop pepper spray saying good <laughs> to bad when spray, spray with pepper you know um <laughs> i don't know it it wasn't a fitting ending for his character i'd say so i completely I, agree um i cuz i i remember wa- uh you know watching it um back and uh you know while i was doing my research for the interview just to make sure i had all my facts straight and everything and i'm thinking Really, he goes from ISA agent, he gets shot, and then he goes to, like, university security. It's like, really? Like, and then you, you don't see him ever again. It's like, for all we know, he could just be, you know, a university, you know, Salem University right now, still security, head of security or whatever. But I I think it would be cool, like, you know, if, you know, because they did this with the character of Eli Grant, or a recent when his kid, when the actor left. Um, where he, his wife ended up going to jail and he ended up getting a job with the FBI in D.C. so he could be closer to where she was going to jail. Um, so I think, you know, maybe you could have got a job, say, with the FBI instead, since you're no longer with the ISA. You moved to Washington, D.C. Now you left the, you left Salem. You're just, just not like one second you're, you're, you know, security at Salem University in Salem. Next minute, you're no longer on canvas. <laughs> I mean, your imagination is better than mine. <laughs> I mean, I, 
if my mind has just moved on from from that whole fiend, you know, like you're the one bringing it back, you know. <laughs> I, I mean, I'll I'll do a quick plug, but uh, I mean, I am a, an author. <laughs> this book's coming out soon, so. <laughs> <laughs> What's that book called? So it's called uh, The Ultimate Halloween Movie Experience. Michael Myers, The Man, The Monster, The Madness. Um, th these images are the legit images from uh, on set of Halloween 2, filmed in 1981. That's why they're black and white. And it was it's being published by Bear Manor Media outside of, uh, in, uh, Illinois, I mean, Florida. And uh, yeah, I mean, I have, it's really cool. I have a bunch of interviews with Halloween cast and crew members, trivia questions and all that. But hey, like we said, the slasher. Yep. The best. Absolutely. We're warped. So hopefully all the success to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's my sixth book that's uh, being published. The first one that's a major publication for a major uh, publishing company. And my literary agent set that up for me. Yeah. For you. Yeah. Thank you. Called a Warrior's Journey by Marcus Patrick. And you can find it on Amazon.com. Awesome. That was my last question was, um, do you have anything, projects, websites, social media accounts, books, anything at all that you would like to promote to the listening and viewing audience? The book is the most PG work I have out there. My only fans, which uh, I don't know how uh, most of these viewers feel about that. They might feel it like very naughty, but hey, <laughs> naughtiness sells. Okay. It does. Yes, <laughs> and most of the time I deal with people one-on-one -on -one because uh, I'm, I go to the club, I meet them, I massage them, you know, I entertain them and I get, get to know who they are in here, mm -hmm. you know, become their masseur or their trainer because I am certified up the yin yang in training. Um, but it's just, it's just about time and money and respect. And you just have to be very entrepreneurial these days and, and make decisions as to like, do I want to engage with this person and give them my time and energy? Are they being respectful? Just like I did with you. Yeah. You know, crazy people in the world. And we can't, we can't rule that out. You know what I mean? There's like, there's a lot of crazy people in the world. And mm -hmm. I don't think a political or a, a, a cultural or a race thing. It's just like, who are you in here? Mm -hmm. Who is in here? Who's inside this avatar we walk around in? Absolutely. like, And that's the thing. Like, when, when and, and this is for any podcaster that might be watching this, but just if, if you're reaching out to a celebrity to do an interview, just because they ask you for, you know, what you've done, like your work and everything so they can view, doesn't mean that they're looking to see what viewership you have. They're looking to see if they if they want to be on your show because you're a energetic, trustworthy, entertaining type of host because they don't want to be on a show that the host is going to be boring or negative or political or any of that stuff that's going to not bring attention to their episode that people want to watch. Correct. You, you just, you want to be like, ultimately I want to engage with your fans and then introduce you to my fans and then make it something that's positive. So it, it's, it um, takes us all up. Yes, you know, absolutely. Completely agree. Well, I thank you so much, Marcus, for joining me this evening. Well, thank you for reaching out. Absolutely. I'm really grateful that we got to make this happen. I had a great time. I had so much fun. I learned so much that I didn't even know, which is which is a bonus. And I'm sure a lot of the Days fans that watched you on Days are going to learn also more information about you and what happened behind the scenes and why you were there one minute and gone the next. And it, it, it ultimately shows, you know, your character for coming on to, you know, share those stories with all of us. Yeah, I guess it must, it must seem weird. And I think my agent at, back in the day when I wanted to share with my fans, look, Hey, this is going on. My agent would say, no, 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 no. You can't put that out there as public information. And I'm like, well, really? Why not? And it's like, I, so you kind of feel like you're being found. Yeah. You know? Um, Cause even I wanted to say to the fans, look, you know, I'm only getting, uh, on one show, I was only getting like 1400 per episode, and another show is getting up to 1600 per episode. But when you're living in LA and your um, mortgage is, at the time, was like 20, 20, but with HOA fees, it was like 22, 2300. 
plus car note, plus expenses. I mean, you you understand expenses, right? Yeah. Well, that's crazy. So just to even live on the bread line, right? Yeah. Mortgage. I probably had to have pulled in 5K to be on the bread line. You know what I mean? Wow. Like, yeah. Yeah. And what you were actually, like, like your mortgage was, I, I'm in a two better. Right. They were not giving massive checks. So I wasn't getting rich. Hence, I yeah. had to. And that was one thing I wanted to share with my public, like, because some public fans were like, why do you still dance if you're a soap opera star? I'm like, do you not understand how little they pass? And I don't know whether my age, my agent was later found to, to have taken at least $50,000 of my income. Oh, my God. Rang me up, said, you, where's this $50,000? I'm like, what? And they said, well, we sent it to your agent. And I'm like, wow. And so we did the investigation. So he had taken it. So I don't know whether he was taking it before either. Wow. You know? Yeah. These are those are the real stories going on behind the actor's reality. You know. So if you're dealing with like, okay, I need income. Income is a reality. I'm on your show, but if I'm not getting income, then I got to go dance to make that income. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. what it is. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. Like, and I mean, I can't imagine having a you know a mortgage or a rent or whatever that being that much because of my, I mean, mine is only like fourteen oh eight for a two bedroom. I'm in Baltimore, but and I'm thinking that's still a lot. <laughs> You're in Baltimore, like Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah there was, that was when it was two thousand and seven, two thousand and eight. So yeah. I don't know what it is right, now, but yeah, LA place. And it wasn't like I had a huge place. I had a had what you call a condo or a townhouse like it was three yeah. stories it was like next to another one so like a duplex type thing yeah. it wasn't like a mansion you know wow, uh, yeah. people think this house that i bought here in texas is a mansion but uh you know this is a big enough house for a family I wouldn't call it a mansion but it's I, I this is much more than i had in la you know wow crazy yeah, well, I do thank you for joining me. I mean, I'm so grateful that you could share the stories that, you know, for everybody and so they can actually hear what goes on behind the scenes because those are the things you don't hear about and you watch the show as your guilty pleasure, but you don't realize what goes behind the scenes for a lot of the shows. Yep, and life. Life goes life. on. Yep, absolutely. Well, I thank you, Marcus. You have a great rest of your night. Love bless you and love bless your audience. Thank you. Bye.